Cool. Good afternoon. This is Richard from BlenderGrid.com with another video. In this video, I want to talk about render optimization and more specifically, the noise threshold setting in Blender because this is a very useful setting and I'm planning on doing a bunch of uh, render optimization videos that cover like the, the render settings and maybe other things that you can do um, if I find good use cases. So this first one will be about the noise threshold. A um, little bit about no uh, render optimization. What What is the purpose? It's pretty much trying to get the best possible render out of Blender without spending a whole lot of time or money on it. So in the context of rendering yourself on your own computer or your own studio, uh, of course you can get a higher render quality, higher resolution, but you're gonna have to wait longer for the render to finish. Or of course you can save time by lowering resolution and getting a crappy quality render, but then yeah, you don't, you don't want that. So you want the best of both wor worlds. That's the idea with this optimization. And in the context of Blender Grid, we kind of approach it a little bit different where we say, how long do you want it to take? And if it's like three hours, we say, okay, it's going to be this much to render it three hours. So it's not necessarily saving time if you optimize your scene before sending it to us, but it will be saving you money because it will be cheaper to render in three hours if it's optimized versus not optimized. So yeah, that's the whole purpose about render optimization. And there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. Uh, today, I want to cover the noise threshold setting uh, in Blender. And I have done a, a video covering this, but it was in an older version of Blender and I kind of want to update things. Uh, the menus have changed and yeah, so that's that's why I'm doing it again. Uh, I'm, I'm using a different example, actually a better example, I think, of how you can use this setting. And if we look at the documentation, they still talk about uh, this thing called adaptive sampling, which is basically what's happening behind the scenes if you use the noise threshold. It's when this was just introduced, Blender had a section called adaptive sampling. I believe you could enable that. Um, now it, there, it's just enabled by default and yeah, this is pretty much what it is. So the noise threshold allows you to let Blender choose an appropriate amount of samples between the min and the max that you set over here. You let Blender choose any number between those for every pixel. So every area of the image will get a tailored sample count based on the noise threshold because Blender can measure how much noise a pixel has, probably compared with the neighbors um, and, or not the noise, not the noise compared to the neighbors, but the value of the pixel compared with the neighbors. There's probably an algorithm that Blender uses behind the scenes to measure how much noise a pixel has in an image. Um, and based on that, we can say, okay, if a, of course we start very high, very high noise, when we just start rendering with the first samples and over time the noise goes down but when we hit this noise threshold we tell blender okay if you hit any pixels below this number then you can stop and then you can just you know set whatever use whatever uh, value between the min and the max uh, that you have. So it will at least give every pixel four samples in this case. And then from there, it starts to look, okay, how noisy is this pixel? Is it below this number? Yes. Then we're going to stop and we're going to focus on the, the rest of the image. That's kind of the intuition behind it. So in practice, what Blender, uh, the documentation says about it is that using this will allow you, uh, you know, faster rendering and a more even noise distribution. And that is what I want to show in this practical example. So this render is rendered without noise threshold. And as you can see, it's pretty clean, except for this area of the light. And this was rendered with, I believe, 
512 pix um, samples per pixel, which is a average amount. Um, it's it's great, and for for the most most part, it's great. But in this light, there's so much caustics going on that it's just not enough. And if you would want to clean this up with sampling, so not with denoising, but actually clean it up with the render, you would have to give it a lot more samples, maybe 2,000 or something. And that would uh, take about four times as long. It's uh, The amount of samples is about a linear, has about a linear uh, relation with render times. Um, so that is a waste of rendering because you're, you're spending all those, all that render power on every part of the image, not just where you need it. And that's where noise threshold can help because noise threshold can let Blender stop sampling clean areas and keep focusing on an area that is still noisy. And so if we jump over to another render that was done with the following settings, the render times were comparable. Uh, the the one with the noise threshold, the one with the cleaner uh, headlight is took 10 seconds longer. But here you can clearly see that the the amount of noise is way better distributed over uh, the picture. And even this part is now more noisy than before, which means we took away render power from this area and we put it more into this area. So that kind of shows exactly uh, what, what we mean with more evenly distributed noise. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much a very good use case because now this is very zoomed in. So this looks noisy, but if you look at it from the actual size, you barely see it. If you zoom in twice, still barely see it. But if we look at the original one, you can see that this is pretty noisy right now. And that might not be acceptable for an animation. Whereas this might, might be very easy to clean up with a denoiser because it's way more evenly distributed and way less extreme than the other one. So here you have the difference. And that's pretty much it. The way I got to this is pretty much setting a very high range of min to max. The reason I set four as the min is like, if you set it to zero, which would seem like a, a higher range when you set this to zero blender will actually automatically set this setting to something else so i just wanted to set it to something very extremely low where you would almost never want to have four samples per pixel um but i will just let blender figure that out and so i set it to four and then the max to eight thousand which is just really high and i will never i would never want blender to hit actual eight thousand samples but we don't because we use the noise threshold to stop sampling uh, earlier than hitting 8,000. And the uh, noise threshold is fairly high. I just set it to a value where it was uh, a, comp a comparable render time to the one with the 512 uh, max samples and no noise threshold. And that's kind of how I go about setting this. Um, so the thing to keep in mind with the noise threshold is the lower the better quality image, less noise, longer render times. And high is low render times, more noise. Blender will stop sampling sooner. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the intuition uh, you should have about it. If you don't have any idea what to set it to, you can also set this one to zero because then what happens is then, where is it? Oh, there. Setting it to exactly zero lets Cycles guess an automatic value for it based on the total sample count, which is probably the max samples setting. So if you set this to zero, Cycles will set a, an appropriate setting based on this level. So in this case, that would probably not be good because this is a really high setting that I never want to, uh, pretty much never want to hit. So yeah, that's my video about noise threshold is a pretty uh, small setting, but I don't want to cram all these settings into one video. So 
this is a noise threshold video. I'll probably walk through the list and if there's any setting that you can use to get a high quality image faster, I will probably cover it if, if I can find some good practical examples with it. Um, yeah, I hope that was helpful. If you have any other, if you have any questions or any other topics you want me to cover uh, in the realm of render optimization, please leave them in the comments because I'm looking for ideas. Um, otherwise, I'll just run through the list of settings and see what I can do. So yeah, hope that was helpful and enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.